Welcome to the Tail Labs Optical Land video series, Fundamentals of Pong. This video is on basics of design. The purpose of this video is to provide a rudimentary understanding of the network design process when deploying optical land. This video serves as an introduction to the optical land design process. For more comprehensive training, see the link in the description. The topics covered in this video are codes and standards relating to Pong, the optical LAN pond cable infrastructure, and optical LAN equipment usage and placement. To engineer successful optical LAN deployment, the standards and codes relating to pond must be considered. Standards are rules set up by mutual industry agreement. These rules affect the compatibility of fiber cables and communications equipment, as well as the protocols and testing methods used in the network. Codes are rules that are established by local authorities where the optical LAN system is to be installed. These include fire ratings for cables and components, plenum compliance, and electrical codes that dictate power and grounding. PON standards put requirements on the optical medium and the hardware used to access it and defines the way Ethernet frames are converted to an optical signal. The GPON standard sets the parameters of that signal. The bandwidth of the single connection between the OLT and ONTs is 2.4 gigabits per second downstream, 1.2 gigabits per second upstream, shared between 64 ONTs using a time division multiplex access protocol. GPON specifies protocols for error correction and encryption and defines a protocol for line control, which includes authentication. Although the physical fiber infrastructure and data formatting conventions for 10 gig XGS PON technology remains unchanged from the original GPON standard, the wavelengths have shifted. XGS PON operates at a downstream wavelength of 1577 nanometer and an upstream wavelength of 1270 nanometer. The main reason for this is to allow multiple PON services to coexist on the same PON and allow for seamless service upgrade. The wavelengths for XGS PON differ from GPON standard. This means the system is capable of accommodating GPON and XGS PON standards over the same fiber network simultaneously. Though implementations of GPON and XGS PON share a lot of common features, many features are left undefined, specifically the exact kind of fiber cable and connectors to use. Telabs uses single mode fiber for the PON infrastructure. This provides the best reach and longevity for the network. At the OLT, SC-UPC connectors are used. At the ONT, SC-APC connectors are used. These connector types are common, reliable, and cost-effective. Equipment standards for PON establish the fiber signal receive range for the ONT and OLT transceivers. This is between negative 8 and negative 27 dBm downstream and negative 8 to negative 28 upstream. Since the optical LAN system is passive on the ODN, care must be taken to ensure that the planned deployment creates adequate attenuation to make sure measured fiber signal falls within this range. Factors that create attenuation include the optical splitter, uh, the distance between the OLT and ONT, fiber connectors, and splices. An understanding of the insertion loss created by these elements is critical to establishing a usable plan. To power optical LAN equipment, electrical codes must be considered. Class II power is used on most TELAB small form factor ONTs. Class II power is defined as being less than 60 volts DC and power limited to 100 watts as defined in Article 725 of the NEC. Class II power is beneficial in the optical LAN because it does not require the same fire and safety precautions as Class I power and does not have to be installed by a certified electrician. This generates significant savings when deploying optical LAN. Class IV is a new circuit term defined in 2023 in the NEC. Class IV systems are referred to as fault managed power systems. Class IV power can deliver higher wattages and longer distances than Class II. These systems are not power limited and can deliver hundreds of watts of power. They intelligently limit the amount of energy that can go into a fault. Limiting the fault energy mitigates the risk of shock or fire 
and allows the installation of class 4 circuits using methods much like power limited circuits. Plenum cables and components are designed specifically for use within a building's plenum space. Because the plenum space is used for air circulation, it is critical that anything used inside the plenum not impact air quality or increase the danger of fire. For these reasons, plenum spaces require cables and components that are plenum rated, meaning that they meet higher standards like being more resistant to fire and producing less smoke in the case of a fire. Some optical LAN installations require that ONTs be placed in plenum spaces. These ONTs must either be plenum rated or be placed in mountings that meet plenum code. One of the unique features of optical LAN is the flexible deployment of the ONT. ONTs have been designed for a variety of installation options. There are many factors that may determine what type of ONT to use. Service type, building codes, security, economy, density, and location. ONTs are not network switches and do not need to be secured in the network. However, it may be advantageous to deploy them as you would an access switch. By placing the ONT in the equipment room, existing CADEX cable can be reused, a higher density of ports can be installed where they are needed, and network components can be secured in untrusted environments. Closet-based switch replacement is an efficient brownfield deployment of PON. Closet-based workgroup switches can be replaced by new 48-port ONTs. ONTs are powered, mounted, and cabled the same way as the workgroup switch. PoE and UniPort capabilities are the same. Copper is reused, and in many cases, fiber is reused. In comparing active Ethernet solutions to optical LAN, consider that optical LAN has only one IP address to protect, one OLT to secure, one layer two switch to provision, one software load to maintain, and one OLT console port to secure. A zone or area deployment of ONTs provides a deep fiber solution with the same security as a comm closet installation. Here, fiber extends beyond the comm closet, but not all the way to the desktop. Zone boxes are located near drop locations, thus cutting down on copper cabling. The zone deployment is more flexible for network growth, but has the same network security as the comm closet deployment. Zone deployments work well in schools, hospitals, hotels, stores, and anywhere that an untrusted environment exists. In a desktop deployment, the fiber is installed all the way to the Ethernet endpoint. A desktop installation provides the lowest CAPEX solution, assuming ONT sharing. ONTs can either be powered locally at the desktop or by a power distribution unit using composite cable or reusing CADEX cable. The desktop or cubicle deployment provides the deepest fiber installation with the minimum of copper. This deployment is typically in a trusted environment. In-wall deployments offer a deep fiber solution for the untrusted environment. The fiber and power connectivity are safely housed inside the wall, back to the comm closet. Wall plate and ethernet connectors are identical to legacy active ethernet. This reduces ONT theft, damage, tampering, and disconnects. It also provides a cleaner and more economical installation. Specialized ONTs are used to support wireless access points. Pond fiber reaches two ONTs installed in ceiling areas, almost eliminating copper cabling. These ONTs support the high bandwidths and high PoE wattage required for modern Wi-Fi access points. Additionally, ONTs for wireless deployment can be installed in plenum areas without special plenum rated mounting brackets or boxes. OLTs come in a variety of capacities and implementations. The OLT chosen for the optical LAN deployment will be determined by a few factors. The number of PON ports needed to support the optical LAN deployment, the number of service ports that will be required by the system, the percentage of future growth planned, and the location the OLT will need to be installed. It is important to remember that optical LAN is an expandable format. 
During the planning of the optical land deployment, it is important to create a plan that provides sparing for future growth. As a rule of thumb, there should be at least 25% spare capacity on the OLT. If the plan calls for more than three-fourths the access port or pond port capacity of the OLT, it would be sensible to move to a larger OLT. The same concept can apply to each of the pond ports. The pond port supports up to 64 ONTs and 512 access ports. It is desirable to leave room on the pond for more ONTs and access ports to leave room for growth or future bandwidth needs. This concludes this video. In it, we have discussed codes and standards relating to pond, the optical land pond cable infrastructure, and optical land equipment usage and placement.